Is it time to sell my riding lawnmower and replace it with this? My name is Jamie Andrews and this is the Mimotion Luba 2, a robot lawnmower with GPS enabled navigation, which means you don't have to install perimeter wires around your yard. In this video, I will give you a brief tour and in the end, give you a list of my pros and cons, followed by my conclusion and answer that question and let you know the future of my riding mower. Before we get started, I want to take a few moments to talk about their four different models. The one I have is the Luba 2 3000, which is designed for yards up to about three quarters of an acre, and it allows you to set up 20 different mowing zones. The next model up is the 5000, good for 1.25 acres and 30 zones. And the top model is the 10,000, which will tackle two and a half acres and up to 60 zones. Each model has the same size battery, giving you roughly 180 minutes of advertised runtime. The 1000 is the entry model and the only one that has a smaller battery with 120 minutes of runtime good for a quarter of an acre and up to 10 zones. Each model can be purchased with a high or low cutting deck depending on your yard type. All Luba models are all wheel drive and have a motor for each wheel. This doesn't have steerable wheels, so they put omnidirectional wheels on the front to protect your yard while it turns. In the app, you have the choice between zero point or multi-point turns. Here is an example of a multi-point turn, which is a setting I think most people will use, although it does slow the machine down some. The zero point turn, or as some people call it, a tank turn, completely reverses the direction of the left and right wheels to allow it to turn in place. Up front, you also get spring-loaded suspension, which will help keep the cutting deck level with the ground. The rear tires are not omnidirectional as they are designed to be able to get traction in the most difficult of places in your yard. A major upgrade from the original Luba is with the object avoidance. Up front you have a large impact bumper with a bump sensor designed to tell the robot to reverse course if it should bump into things. It is also paired with a set of three ultrasonic radar sensors and what Momotion calls 3D vision cameras to allow it to assist with navigation. These cameras can be remotely viewed through the app, as long as the robot has a solid internet connection. Up top we have an emergency stop button, start button, home button, a grass button, and a power button. Above that we see the rain sensor. In the app you can restrict it from mowing in the rain, which is something I recommend doing. On the side, we have a fixed side guard and a set of LED indicator lights, which can be switched on or off in the app. Under the deck, we have not one but two cutting discs with eight hardened and very sharp cutting blades. You also get an extra set provided in the box. The charging dock has a single charging LED light up top. Down below, we see the charging contacts and the IR sensor to help assist the robot when backing into the dock. You'll want to secure the dock in place using the provided anchors. Let's take a moment to talk about connectivity. The Luba 2 has satellite receivers on its back that work in conjunction with the RTK station, which communicates with the robot via radio frequency, good for up to three miles. This system used together can provide pinpoint accuracy when mowing. If it fails, it can also navigate a short distance via the 3D vision cameras, which will hopefully get it back in the view of satellites. I'll leave a link in the description that further explains how an RTK system works. It's pretty neat. Once you have followed the detailed instructions for assembly and setting up the dock and RTK station, you'll be ready to begin setting up mowing zones in the app. But first, to connect the robot with the remote motion app, you have three methods. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or cellular connection via 4G SIM chip sold separately. Next, you will need to drive the Luba 2 around the perimeter of your yard to map each mowing zone. I split my yard up into three different zones. You'll want to stay a foot or so away from objects on the perimeter like houses and fences. You can create no-go zones around trees, shrubs, and sheds, which will allow the Luba to more easily navigate around these obstacles. 
If you don't get it perfectly correct the first mo, you can go back in and edit the boundary lines and no-go zones. The app gives you a ton of customized setting from mowing patterns, mowing speed, cutting angle, cutting height, and much, much more. You can schedule the robot to mow some or all of your zones on certain days of the week. In the app, you have a few choices for object avoidance, and I recommend the one that says no touch. If the object is big like this bucket, I found it worked extremely well. Trash cans can move around your yard and thankfully it will avoid those. But what about smaller objects? Take this box for example. It should be seen by the camera, but it only avoids it because it tripped the bumper sensor. I placed myself in harm's way and got way too close for comfort. Although the bumper would have stopped it from harming me, I chickened out. When I turned my body sideways, it did pick me up on the sensors and it correctly avoided me. It won't dodge sprinklers, water hoses, small objects like toys or sticks and limbs, so I suggest picking up in the yard each time before sending it out, which does kind of defeat the purpose of scheduling it to mow. Let's talk about maintenance. After a few mowings, I use light water pressure to rinse the luba off on top. Always do this powered off, and while you're at it, lift up the mower and spray off the deck as well. Make sure you don't use high pressure water. How long the blades will last will entirely depend on the conditions in your yard and whether you let it run over sticks and other debris. You do get a spare set of blades in the box and more can be purchased online. Mine are still razor sharp today. The robot is IPX6 rated. For this reason, I suggest buying the add-on garage attachment that mounts to the dock and will help protect your investment. The RTK station is IPX7 rated, which is much better. I live in Florida, so I did not get to test the claim of it being able to climb a 38 degree slope, but I see no reason why it cannot. My yard has a good bit of sand in it, and the Luba 2 with its all-wheel drive system never got stuck, which is more than I can say about my riding lawnmower. Okay, let's talk about some pros and cons, starting with the cons. And for me, the biggest con was the one I see mentioned over and over online, which is with the way the robot turns. Even though you may have it set to do only multi-point turns in the app, at times it will still randomly do zero-point turns, aka tank turns. I find this happens when it is near the edge of a zone or no-go zone, and often it does it while navigating to and from the dock. This can tear up your grass, especially if it is new or if you have soft sole like I do. While thick grass can take more of this abuse, you may want to vary the cutting patterns so that it won't do zero turns in the same place every job. When returning to the charge, it will do a zero turn right in front of the dock, which is also a frequent online complaint. And this is why I purchased this plastic platform off of Amazon to protect this area. A link to this is in the description below. The next con is with the object avoidance, which is not enabled around the edge of mowing zones, which explains why it would randomly bump into my fence, my shed, and finally this pile of sticks left at the edge of my property. This is stated in the manual and I gave feedback to my motion that this should be enabled. Their reason is that it would become too sensitive near bushes and shrubs at the edge of the property line, but for me this is less of an issue than having it to use the bumper to impact objects. It would also be wise to put a sensor on the back of the robot since the robot is effectively blind while reversing. Now on to the pros with the Luba 2. Mamotion has been around for a few years and they are already considered by many to be the leader in the industry. They really care about their products and willingly accept feedback for making it better. Thankfully, it can get better through over-the-air firmware and app software updates, and they come quite frequently. The company is active in the support forums online as well. This gives me lots of hope that the issues I just spoke about will get resolved in the future. I've already seen many examples of improvements over the past several months via firmware and software updates. The next pro is with the quiet operation.
Now, this could be cutting grass three feet away from you and you can still carry on a conversation. It is that quiet. The all-wheel drive system is perfect for people with challenging terrain. It never once got stuck in my sandy yard. I found the overall accuracy of navigation while mowing to be very accurate, and it leaves perfectly straight mowing lines in my yard. In the end, my yard looks better, and the best thing is I can schedule it to go out twice a week or more and keep my grass looking freshly mowed. I now also feel comfortable letting it mow around my yard without supervision. If you're into side hustles, you could also send this out to cut a neighbor's yard and make a little extra dough doing so. Trust me, the neighbors will stop you and inquire about this race car looking robot buzzing around your property. Most won't believe it's actually mowing your yard. This in itself is worth the price of admission. In conclusion, the Mimotion Luba 2 robot lawnmower is one of the coolest, most innovative pieces of technology that I have reviewed to date. Sure, it does take some time tweaking it to get it set up just right, but once you do, you can sit back and enjoy a cold beverage while the Luba does all the work. My only question left is, will I sell my riding mower and replace it with the Luba 2? And the answer is a resounding yes, without a doubt. I can't wait to get it out of my garage along with the gas cans. Stay tuned as I'll have a review out for the Mimotion Yuka a new entry-level two-wheel drive robot mower that is designed for people with smaller yards and budgets. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss this review. If you have any questions, be sure to drop those down below. And I want to thank you for watching this video. These won't be the last robot mowers I will review on this channel, so be sure to subscribe if you like unbiased and in-depth robot reviews. All right, take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.